For my first book, uh, Poet of the Sphere, I want to recite a poem that I wrote um, called Roses in December. And I remember writing this poem um, vividly. And it was a summer's day, very much similar to the one that it is today. And um, it just occurred to me it, that the... I heard the phrase, I heard the, the title, Roses in December, and for some reason it just sparked an idea in my head and I just sat down and uh, I wrote this poem. So this is the poem, Roses in December. Memory, nostalgia, that special feeling of yesteryear, our hopes, our dreams, that which we hold on to like a souvenir, never to be replaced, never to be extinguished, the constant of everything for which we have ever wished, Eden, utopia, a perfect place of eternal bliss, that place you go to with a friend when you reminisce, one of the most powerful draws that lies just over the horizon, a promise that we can be whatever we can possibly imagine a foothold of faith a leap for love that first glimpse of the one you adore and are in awe of not only a memory but an eden in its own right like a forever beckoning beacon of emotion and light that resonates infinitely and is an in uninterrupted delight which even after first sight Makes your heart race and take flight. The rush, the essence, and the allure of love at first sight. Roses in December is the gift that memory bestows. To be able to go back in time and deliver like a single red rose. The scent, the palate, the poignancy of life that our senses merely hint to. An infinite, unrelenting, penetrating, perfect beautiful view that forever and always stays with you and will carry on even after our last adieu so that was my poem roses in december and i must have written that back in 2011 i think it may have been 2010 i can't remember the actual year but i remember where i was i was at home here and uh, I'm writing that, and that was a a part of my first poetry collection, Poet of the Sphere. And that poem does mean a lot to me. I'll just flick through my uh, first book, Poet of the Sphere, here uh, at random, and that was the first poem that came to my fingertips. And I'm glad it did because it is one of my favourite poems that I've written. And another poem that I wrote. From my poetry collection, The Sound of Mark, um, that came out in, um, that came out in 2013. Uh, it's also a collection of poems and, um, this poem is called Quintessence. As pure as water from a stream, as clear as a colour that stands out in a dream, as resonant as a pin drop in a silent room, as limitless as the stars that shine and sound like a vast orchestra playing in tune, as beautiful as a raindrop, as light as a cloud, as full of stories as a library or a bookshop, as numerous and varied as the faces of people in a crowd, as peaceful as a gallery, as blissful as a boat ride down a river, as special as a single beautiful line of poetry, as unpredictable as the weather, as lightning as a joke, as interesting as a mystery, 
as surrounding as a blanket or a cloak, as evoking and changing as the life of a tree, as complicated as a person, as stimulating as a question, as enrapturing as being in love and being loved by someone, as revealing as an exhibition, as perfect as a kiss, as epic as a journey, as precious as a wish, as deep as a seed of self-discovery, as strong as a parent's bond, as tender as a baby's touch, as diverse as the life that you may find in a pond, as amazing as a gift given and one received, they will always mean so much, as rich as the colours that can be seen under the sea, as mystical as a sixth sense, as heavenly as life on earth can ever be, as we live and experience things that go beyond our limited understanding, we glimpse, even if it is for a fraction of a second or within a brief flash of light, life's unparalleled, phenomenal, beautiful, perfect quintessence. So again, that was from my book, The Sound of Mark. Okay, so the third poem that I want to recite to you is Keep Writing. And I remember writing this poem uh, that is from my book, The Eternal Boy, that came out in 2015. And uh, I remember where I was. I was in Starbucks in Coventry and I was just sat there at a table with my caramel macchiato just thinking of what I'm going to write next and I just thought I don't know what I want to write about and I just remember every time uh, someone read one of my poems uh, most people, they would say, great, you know, they would give me very positive feedback, and something that a lot of people would add at the end was, keep writing, and uh, that's something that I have always taken to heart, and it was something that stuck in my mind, and especially at that point, when I was just sitting in Starbucks, waiting for inspiration to hit me like a light, lightning strike and I thought you know what I'm gonna write about what it means to keep writing and why that is important for a poet for a writer um, for an artist because when you've got a gift and you feel like you've got a purpose in life and you're a writer especially then you've got to keep writing so this is my poem keep writing when it's four o'clock in the morning and everyone around you is still sound asleep. When you are up and awake and already imagining, still dreaming, thinking, creating, writing. And you feel comfortable to open the door to the place inside you that leads to your soul. The place where everything you can imagine is just waiting to be let out and allowed to run and leap. When an idea comes to you. When you can already hear the melody and voice of a beautiful and exciting new piece of music. When you feel something that seemed so small once begin and never stop growing inside you. The feeling, the experience, the time, you are heart racing away. The silence, the noise, the close, the far. Feel like they are all inside you and connected to you. And I can tell you that when I have those moments, when I'm touched by true inspiration, like I am every day, it is absolutely breathtaking and epic. There are times in your life when you can't say what you want to say because words simply fail you. There are times when I say everything I want to say with one word. 
I realised once that the more powerful thought and idea of everything can be found when you seek out the far between and the few. Never give up never give up on love. Never turn your back on something that means everything. Never doubt your heart. And never even think to stop the flow of what makes you who you are. Never stop looking. Never stop talking. Never stop cooking. Never stop doing. Never stop believing. Never stop watching. Keep being inspired. Keep being inspiring. Keep being too awake to be tired. Keep calm. And do what everyone keeps telling me to do. Keep writing. And again that was from my poetry collection. The Eternal Boy. Okay. So. The last poem. That I want to read. Is from my poetry collection. The Dreamer and the Dream. And that's my latest. Poetry collection. That I released and it came out in 2015. Of course I've written books since and poems since. But I haven't um, published an entire collection of poems. Simply just poems um, since 2015. I've published an amalgamation of the two you could say. I, I've published a collection of short stories and poetry in my book too close to the sun but uh yeah to uh, in 2015 that was the f the year that i released the dreamer in the dream and this was just just poetry the last collection of uh poetry released in a in a single book and the poem that i want to read to you is the walking king and um, I am an avid walker as well as an avid writer and for me the two go hand in hand because you know to be an artist to be a writer you have to see the world you have to get out there and you have to see everything that life has in store for each and every one of us it, that it displays and which gifts to each and every one of us every day but some people for one reason or another are unable to see it but i find that when you walk especially through nature through a forest through a field and i'm lucky enough to live very close to fields and forests and i've spent countless hours walking through fields and forests just taking long intakes of breath and breathing in the fresh air and being inspired by everything that I see and also by just the 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 instinct of momentum you know walking gives you a a sense of momentum a sense that you're achieving something and uh, yeah I've always been a walker I've walked miles in many places I've walked miles through New York City, through Birmingham here in England, in London, everywhere. I've I've walked miles and miles and miles, and yeah, it's um, I've always felt even more energized afterwards. So this is my poem, "The Walking King." I love walking. I've always loved walking. I love discovering, I love exploring, I love adapting, I love finding new ground, I love trekking and I happily would walk and keep going until I could be counted among the lost and found. When you walk, you see the world and you get to take in its beauty. When you walk, the depth of colour and the exquisite detail that you can see stretches to infinity and the ecosystem that carries on regardless of the sometimes pettiness of humanity 
do not blink. Because to them, they have an entire life and a whole world of their own to survive in. Thrive in. And do the best they can in. And most of the time, these self-contained worlds that occasionally overlap are focused of a single goal and an encompassing need to maintain their species well-being. When I walk, I see things, I hear things, I think about things, I imagine things, I feel things that I would not anywhere else and while doing anything else. And I feel transformed, and I do not for a second want to stop feeling or being the person I am, because the thrill and the rush that galvanises me is more powerful than any drug, and it is a natural instinct and magic that comes from within us all, as well as from our surroundings, whether we are walking free and roaming in the air of the countryside, or in a park, or even along the streets and pavements of a busy city. If you love to walk like me, you will walk anywhere at any time. In the daylight, in the dark, in the peaceful solitude of the wilderness, in the noisy and chaotic motorway of a never-ending, never-stopping, never-abating, living laboratory of an energetic and energising metropolis. The call to be on your feet is one that a walker and a runner cannot ignore, and it may even wake them in the middle of the night as they sleep soundly. The importance and the gift to walk is one that is primal and runs deep. Sometimes we can act without having to think, and walking is one of those things that, if we can, we will do and under our own subconscious locomotion, we can achieve and maintain without a blink. Those of us who can walk, take it for granted. Those of us who can climb, go anywhere, stand on a mountain, walk on the sea floor, have the amazing gift to see and go to every corner of our Go to every corner of every country and continent on our wondrous and beautiful planet. When I walk, I take in the temperature and the touch of the air. When I walk, I feel exhilarated as I witness the incredible, the unbelievable, the fantastic and the amazing. When I walk, I'm in my own world. And I feel like I can go anywhere. When I walk, the world truly comes alive. And sometimes I cannot believe my eyes. As I witness the endless cycle of a world in the making. That I am a part of. And more often than not, when I walk. I love the feeling of being a walking king. And that was my poem, Walking King. From my poetry collection, The Dreamer and the Dream. And uh, I think I'll leave it at that. Um, or perhaps I can read to you um, one of my most recent poems that I've written since that. The last poem that I just recited to you, uh, I wrote a very long time ago in comparison. Okay, so here we go. So this poem is called Undercover, and I posted this poem online on my blog um, on May the fifth, May the tenth, sorry, of uh, this year. So not that long ago. Undercover, under the hood, under the skin. Whether sitting under the shine of the sun, or at times when under the weather, whether it is raining or sunny, 
Everybody is somebody else. Everybody has a secret identity. Everybody dreams, thinks, feels and dwells upon the reflection of the one who they see within themselves when they internalise with their inward looking eyes. <clears throat> Under normal circumstances, the best way to understand why we do what we do and who we are would be to stop ourselves and scrutinise what we truly want and desire and to ask ourselves whether the actions that we have taken have been progressive or self-destructive in order to find the bliss that we wish we had within our grasp. Under investigation, the sins and the crimes that we are guilty of are as clear as day. But just because we might be guilty of being selfish from time to time, that does not mean that heaven does not await each and every one of us if we seek and follow a path of redemption, and if we first forgive ourselves for being human and fallible. Under a microscope, a scientist may be able to discover a lot about what makes our biology the way that it is and how different we are from other people who might look similar to how we appear. However, the truth in the matter <coughs> is that everybody is a product and the result of an experiment that has been ongoing for billions of years and characters in a story that each of us has a version of that we tell ourselves all the time that binds everybody and who and how they see themselves when they are looking at the world from under a cover now it's my poem undercover and you can read that poem right now, if you're listening to this, on my blog, markthepoet.me. Uh, so there is a... Um, there is a selection of poems that I've written um, from the beginning to back in 2000 and... and 10, 2012, 2013, 14, 15, and right now, here in 2019. And uh, I can definitely see a change in the way that I've, that I've written poetry and how I write. And I never thought that I... I would change, but the the main things are still there. The way I write, the passion is still there, but there is definitely a change in in how I how I write and why I write. And I think for the most part, when I first began writing poetry, I did write to share my gift to inspire people and to share my the inspiration that I had. I gained from life and now I I still have that same same wish to share my gift but I also just wish to leave a part of myself I guess a part of who I am my own fingerprint my own footsteps and uh, yeah hopefully give people a reason to seek out my poetry so that they can be inspired themselves because that's the gift of life is to be inspired and to inspire and uh, that's what I always hope to do and uh, yeah I hope that is something that I have achieved like I said, I'm going to leave it there for now, and uh, thank you for listening, and uh, hope you have a great day. For my first book, uh, Poet of the Sphere, I want to recite a poem that I wrote um, called Roses in December, and I remember writing this poem. <clears throat> 